Hello, everybody. And this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. His name is Joe Friesen, and he is an amazing, um, he works with real estate. He's at a great real estate agent. And he today want, wants to discuss about first time buyers. He wants to focus on them. And he really wants to give you some amazing advice, some tools, some tips, some strategies that he's learned, you know, during his time as a real estate agent. So I'm going to give the floor to Joe and let Joe take it over. So Joe, tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do. And, you know, I want to hear more about this because I remember those days as a first time buyer. It was scary. You know, didn't really know much. Yeah, no, it's crazy out there. And uh, I mean, we're working, we're working hard with first time home buyers, trying to get them into the uh, first home. And uh, I mean, we're also trying to teach people that uh, your first home is not your forever home. So we're not starting off where your parents are today and where you want to, you know, work your way towards. Right. So there's a lot of stuff that we can be that I mean, this this conversation could be endless because the, the, the amount that could be covered is just insane. But just pretty much the basics we just want to you know we want to get you from not owning a house to owning a house because i mean yeah. it's one of the greatest wealth building tools you'll ever uh, own actually it's the greatest wealth building tool you will probably ever own so yeah that's pretty pretty straightforward stuff actually so i'm not i don't think i'm gonna be uh you know scaring anybody away with from uh, buying a home but yeah I am a father of two. So you did say talk about myself. I am a father of two. I have two uh, amazing children. I got an eight and a five year old and, uh, and, you know, and we work hard to create a life for them. And we want to also teach them about this, all this good stuff, right? The first time home buying stuff like that. I'm I'm really looking forward to that in 10 years from when my daughter can buy her first home. Like that's going to be, it's exciting. It's a little terrifying, but it's a little bit exciting at the same time. And exactly. I'm just even wondering about where the market's going to be at that time. Right. So, right. Yeah. And just even seeing where our house is going to be at that point, like that evaluation wise and stuff like that. I mean, we see houses going up constantly. They, they they don't typically go down in value. So, right. I think, you know, we were mentioning before, you know, sometimes, you know, people want, you know, they want that beautiful car and they'll invest in a car. And then as, as soon as they buy it, we were talking about the depreciation of cars and how they go down 30% of value. But if, if you purchase a home, which is an asset, you know, it doesn't depreciate. And you can later on, like you said, when you want to move to that second home, when you're ready and maybe, you know, it's time you know, you, you, you can make money off your home, you know, but the question is like for people who are first time buyers, what are some important factors that they need to know? Cause a lot of times people walk into this, they don't really, they're looking at houses, but they really don't know too much what they're doing. You know, um, they know the basics, you know, and what are some important factors that people who are first time buyers should understand? One of the things that I, I would stress with any buyer, especially is, especially first time home buyers is stress getting a real estate agent that might seem a little useless or maybe even dumb in some listeners ears eyes mm -hmm. but the uh, um and the reason for that is exactly for this reason because they can guide you through what they need to have in place they can guide you through what the uh, what um sorry my phone's going off here what they need to um have in the bank account right um, like, I mean, if you want to buy a $200,000, um, condo or something, I mean, we can at least point you in the right direction. Right. Typically, even if you're two years out, we can at least get you where you need to be in two years. Right. Uh, what Stacy was talking about before was we had talked about buying a car. I mean, you buy a car and the value drops like crazy, but you buy a house, the value goes up. It's that whole, well, everybody saw those memes there for a while. Choose your heart, right? What's your heart? Do you want you know, this hard or, you know, this one's going up, one's going down. So the struggle is real. Like everybody wants a new vehicle. I mean, I want a new car so bad too. Like that, <laughs> it, you know, everybody wants the new shiny thing. Everybody wants to move on, but I feel like I'm a little bit rambling right now too, but we do, we do need to pick our own heart. We need to pick where we want to be at in life. We want to, we have to kind of look forward where we want to be in five years compared to where we want to be you know, who two minutes from now we want to drive the, drive off of that shiny car or do we want to five years from now be in that, you know, condo? Do we want to be in that single detached home? Do we want acreage? Like, where, where do you want to be? So right. a realtor can definitely help you with that, um, pointing you in the right direction. They can point you to the right, uh, um, 
mortgage broker and often mortgage brokers are actually financial advisors too so that is also a huge huge benefit so mm -hmm. yeah I know, you know, I have, you know, when we went and we bought our first home, you know, we had a really good real estate agent and they were able to point us in the right direction when it came to finances. They were able to negotiate and, and they were able to help us find, you know, different ways. So, you know, purchasing a home would be affordable for the first time. And, you know, um, a lot of people sometimes are a little bit, um, I'm not going to say the word ignorant, but a little bit stubborn, I'll say, and they will, they think they could do it all by themselves. You know, maybe you can point out some of the pros and cons of, you know, what you've seen when people try to do it on their, by themselves, you know, and buy a home all by themselves for the first time and the, the, and how it, you know, some of the positives, if you use a real estate agent, you know, the difference between the two. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the biggest things I find is that uh, the mortgage broker part. Um, often people think they just have one option. You know, the bank that they're that they're dealing with, they go talk to the to them, and that's it. Often that works, and that's great. And then just calling uh, listing agents and stuff like that too. Again, nothing wrong with that. That might actually be the way you meet your buyer's agent because if any agent out there, he's gonna be he's gonna be asking you what I need. They will uh, they will they will ask you more questions and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of times people think like, why are you asking me all these questions? They feel redundant almost. Um, but it's actually because we actually want to help you get to the next, the next home. Mm -hmm. uh, do we get paid through that? Absolutely. But the big pros are, we often know what's on the market as it hits the market. So you get first dibs on it or mm -hmm. that you um, might even be able to see it before it hits the market. If you're just going from listing to listing to listing, then um, there's a good chance they're either already going into pending, they're already having more than one offer. I mean, we are seeing competing offers still happening. So in, to, in competing offers situation, you definitely want to have an agent on your side so that they can coach you through it. I mean, you don't want to go in there and, and, and overbid on a house by $10,000. So I think there's there's way more pros than there is cons. But the, it is still the trick of finding the right agent that uh, that clicks with you. I mean, I've met people who definitely don't click with me, and I've met people that definitely do click with me. Right. The agents that don't click with me, I have no problem sending them to other agents, especially here in our office. That because I know there's there's people that work differently. I'm an extremely direct person, and you know, I have some other agents that are more like a, you know, like a mother, or they, they you know, where and a lot of people want that. They want to talk to their agent like uh, like you know that authority of like a mom authority. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. No, it's like a mentor. So, absolutely, 100%. And well, that's what we're trying to do too, is just guide you through the process. I mean, I always say we're guiding you home. I mean, that's that's the point. We are guiding you home. So there's just lots of pros, lots and lots of pros. And if you ever want to just even um, talk to your agent, just ask them what they're bringing to the table. If, you, if you're not sure if they're, if they're your agent, if they're the right agent for you, simply ask. Like, what do you bring the table to me? Like, why is, why should I hire you as my uh, buyer's agent? Right. And typically buyer's agents are still free. Often a buyer's agent will also give you a whole booklet that tells you about themselves. It gives you the whole breakdown about, uh, it's a buyer's guide. They'll give you a whole guide about how process should go. And it'll, it'll walk you through what all the costs should be, like home inspection and all that good stuff. Home inspection, lawyer fees, condo fees, if there are any. Yeah. And, and, you know, also yeah. you know, times like people who are selling them ho their homes think their homes are worth a lot more than what it actually is. So a lot of times negotiations, you know, could definitely with the right real estate agent, you know, they have to, cause a lot of people think because they made changes in their home, that their home is automatically worth, you know, that amount, but they don't realize that it's not really how much you, you put into the house, but also what the surrounding environment is worth, the houses around you, you know, so you have to take that into serious consideration. And, you know, first time buyer might not realize that, you know, and then having a real estate agent, I think could probably help you because they could help with the negotiations and they can help, you know, trying to get the better price for you too. Absolutely. 100%. Often it is the case. It's more uh, in uh, private sales where stuff like that happens, where people think their house is worth X amount when it's really worth X amount and all that good stuff. But I mean, it, uh, I mean, 
we can't really take a first time home buyer for a ride either, I guess, in the sense, especially if they're getting financing, right? Um, just because typically they have to do an appraisal and it'll all be happening, you know, go through that, that whole process and that whole shebang. But it is again, just easier. And it saves you a lot of heartache if you do just do it through a, through an agent. And again, one that actually really cares for you and wants to see you succeed. So a lot of people when, you know, especially first time buyers, you know, there's a little bit of a, like a myth, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, I could do this on my own. You know, I'll just ask mom or dad, or I'll have, you know, Auntie May, you know, come with me and, and help me along the way. And, you know, a lot of times people don't realize the importance of having, you know, a real estate agent and they think they can do everything themselves. So, you know, what's your intake? Do you think, you know, how do you feel about people thinking about, oh, I could do this all by myself or, you know, using a real estate agent? Because a real estate agent knows the ins and outs and they really are well equipped to help people get the best possible deal they can get. But is it when when you do have a real estate agent, is it is it all on the real estate agent or, you know, and then the, the 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 people who are buying the home sometimes think they don't have to do much except for look at the houses and decide which one they want. You know, is there a collaboration, you know, that they're responsible for? And then there are things that you're responsible for as well. Yeah, it's a, it'll be a team, a team effort, right? Uh, we need you to go get the pre-approval from the mortgage broker or the bank or whoever you might choose. And if you don't have one yet before uh, when you've already hired a real estate agent, we can at least point you in the right direction as to who to go get or who is the best or who we think is uh, best suited for you as the buyer. The next thing would be um, you get a lot of pros uh, uh, compared to cons uh, when it comes to using a realtor to buy a house. Uh, one of the pros is we're finding houses for you that are on and off the market for you. We're looking for, um, especially when you're hiring a full-time agent, right? One that is looking constantly on the market. Uh, they have their eyes open. They got their ears open. They're talking to other agents. Other agents are talking to them about houses that they are going to have come to the market in a week or two or or in a few days or even a few hours sometimes. And uh, that doesn't seem like it might be a big deal if it's coming on the market a few hours. But the thing is, we can then already start working on getting a showing book for you and get you in there and get you the, you know, get you the first glance, get you, get you in there right away. Um, the second that it's live on the market or whatever it might be. Um, also exclusives. Uh, we have exclusive listings in our office. Even these are listings that uh, people want to sell, but they just don't want to put them on the market yet. Often people put them on for a little bit to see if somebody in our office might have somebody. And that's also a huge benefit for you as the buyer. Um, the the um that that agent should be able to connect you with all of these as well and it also protects you in many ways when it comes to um looking for a home because you don't want to be overpriced you don't want to be overbidding on a house if you go into uh um you know competing offers and all that good stuff and uh it it's it's a huge team effort and you were mentioning about bringing mom and dad and stuff like that. I always encourage it. Bring mom and dad. Bring Don't bring your entire family together. This is not a family reunion. But bring mom and dad. Bring somebody you trust to these home showings. And yeah. uh, because they'll have a lot of insight as well. And they'll have a lot of uh, questions that you might not think of. And that's okay. And they might even ask questions to the agent that the agent doesn't know. But at least the agent now knows where to, like, what questions you want to know. They want to know. They know the answers that you, that are important to you and your family. Like, it's it's just very, very important that you find somebody that can do that for you. You want to find somebody who actually cares enough about you, who is going to find all these answers for you. The, the real, real estate market can just be just so tricky and unpredictable that you, you just need somebody by your side that's actually going to take care of you. So... Right. Long story short, it is it is a team team effort um, because we need to know what you like. You need to tell me if you hate this house. If you hate this house, great. I know not to show you any more houses that are just like that. Right. Um, if you love this house, but we lost out in bidding, well, at least I know where to go. I know where to find other houses that are similar to that. Um, yeah. it, it definitely definitely a teamwork, right? We need to always be in constant communication. We need to be um, we need uh, clarity from the buyer, transparency, right. 
I think that's a, a great answer. And, and a lot of times that you mentioned about price, a lot of times, you know, we, you know, we had mentioned earlier in one of our conversations that a lot of people who sell their homes, you know, think because they made certain renovations and they thought that they did certain things to the house, that their house is worth so much more instead, you know, they don't realize that it's really the value of the neighborhood, the environment around them, you know, it really plays a big role in, in the price of, you know, what that house is going to be. And I know that a lot of people sometimes feel very uncomfortable with negotiation. And, you know, it, it's really, I think, important for people to know how to negotiate because a lot of times these, these houses are overpriced. And, you know, what are some of the things that you think a real estate agent has the upper hand that they could actually do to help the first time buyer, you know, when it comes to negotiation? Local market knowledge. Um, I mean, they're working in uh, that market all the time, right? They know, they see what houses have been going up for sale. They know what houses are coming up for sale. They, they've seen what they sell for and they know, you know, they know if a house is typically priced around this price point that they're either going to go over or this much under, right? So we typically know how much we can, uh, how much wiggle room is is in the price, uh, for that uh, for that buyer. So I think that would pretty much answer that question. It's it, it's it's uh it can just be, it can be tricky. So it's just it's just so huge to have that by your side or have them by your side. Right. What are some of the things that first time buyers have to be aware of that they need to really be on top of certain things like things that you think you know, that are important that they know? So a lot of a lot of things that I've heard is um, where a lot of buyers have said to me, we'll get a pre-approval or we'll go get pre-approved or get approved by the bank once we make an offer. The problem with that is you, especially in this market, you miss out on the opportunity to have the upper hand in um, when it comes to like, competing offers again. Um, yes. it just, it, it puts you ahead by so much further. Like if, if you're writing on a house that is, you know, $300,000 and in, in our area, that's pretty common around that area yeah. that, um, and you're only pre-approved for, you know, 290. I mean, that little bit, that's going to be a real, that's going to be that $10,000 heartbreak is going to, that's going to hit hard. It's going to hit a lot different. Yes. Also, if you're pre-approved for that, now you've been looking at houses like this, you're going to be expecting this for this price. Right. And, and we, and again, it goes back to that whole thing. We want to, we're starting at the beginning, not where your parents are. So we yeah. have to, you know, we're working our way towards that. Not, not the other way around. We're not working from where our parents are, continue our growth. Right. So, but that, that is, that is the biggest one. The, the pre-approval, the pre-approval is crucial. We need to have that in place and we, it just, it gives us so much more buying power and so much more, buying power <laughs> so what about credit you know a lot of times when when people are young they don't have like a lot of credit they haven't purchased a lot of assets and stuff like that but you know you do you need good credit like you know paying off your credit cards and being on time with your bills and stuff like that you know what are some things that first-time buyers have to really you know would help them to know you know especially when it comes to you know having good credit and, and being able to, you know, qualify for a certain loans or financial opportunities that will help them purchase their home. Yeah. So credit is, well, obviously that's a huge one. Then that'll be played out in that pre-approval process as well. But the uh, credit score is huge. We need to have a good credit score. We need to, and in, even in Canada here, like if you're with uh, TELUS or Rogers, uh, like mobile providers, they're all reporting to the credit bureau. So making sure that all your payments are always on time or if not early uh, credit cards, if you keep them 50% or less uh, of the credit limit is a great way of building your credit really fast and get a, getting it um, to the point where you want it. So you can get into the house that you want to be at. Um, one thing I feel like a lot of people don't think about is buying new cars, how much I can bite them in the butt when it comes to buying a new house, you mm -hmm. thinking, you know, $500 car payment's not going to be that big of a deal, but it's going to really, really affect the house buying power. Um, just like, because I mean, that's a $500 additional that could go to a mortgage payment. And yeah. if you think about that, that's, that's huge. That's a big amount. And that's not just over the five years that you're going to be for the house or for the car or eight years, whatever it is now it's over 20 or 25. And that's, yeah. that's a lot of money. Yeah. That so, is a lot of money. I think, absolutely. you know, 
I think, um, you know, you've made a lot of great points. Is there anything else you could think of that really first time buyers really should, you know, um, think about and take seriously and, and focus on while they're trying to save for a home? Budgeting. Uh, people hate that word. People think that that uh, doesn't give them any freedom. To, the And I think the opposite is true. Um, if you budget for, let's even just say a trip. Your budget for a trip to go, you know, you're going to spend this X amount and you know, you're going to have this much for hotel rooms. You're going to have this much for eating out. You're going to have this much for gas, this much for that. And if you just even put those all in envelopes, let's say you reduce all cash and you have a couple of dollars left over at the end of uh, your trip, because you're going to be a lot more aware. It's going to be, it's a mental awareness. That's what budgeting really is all about. And if you're going to have a hundred dollars left over for your gas and you're going to have, you know, 50 bucks left over from eating out and all that stuff. I mean, you're going to just see that, that, that's huge. It's just, you're going to see that right away that how that savings process can start. So budgeting would be a huge one. And it is budgeting is a way to, to create financial freedom for yourself. Right. So, and budget and sticking to it. So I, I always say budgeting is, you know, we can budget, budget, budget. My personal struggle is sticking to a budget. I will go over budget on things a lot, but the thing is you just need to give yourself some lenience on that. It's like, okay, I went over budget this month on this. Yes. We'll uh we'll work on that next month. Now we know where my weakness is in uh, in this area, right? So I think yeah. I, I, so I think, yeah, budgeting is so important. It's so important. Absolutely. I kind of used the philosophy when I when I was doing it is like when I was saving for a house, because I've been married a long time, one of the things we did is we didn't have it, we didn't spend it. And then you know it was tough, but it helped us pay any outstanding debt, any bills we had. And it brought us to the point where we were able to actually purchase our next home and get exactly what we wanted. Yeah, it's almost like uh, the Dave Dave Ramsey method there, the snowball yeah. effect, right? So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and it essentially, that is the way it works. I mean, if you want a great guy for budgeting, that's the guy to listen to, I think. It's just, it's it, exactly that. You don't have the money for it, you don't buy it. It's... It's amazing how mind blowing that is these days, but it's it's true. You don't have the money, just don't buy it. Just keep keep plugging forward. I mean, you're gonna get to where you need to be at. Um, essentially, you're cultivating the ground today for to plant the seeds in the future. Like you will, good old farming. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, that's essentially what you're doing at that point. Just cultivating your finances so that you can have some serious growth later on in the future. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I, you know, I, I think it's so important, um, you know, to as first time buyers to be aware of all these things, because a lot of times people as first time buyers don't even know where to begin, you know, and they don't know, right. you know what they're supposed to be doing. They don't know, you know, um, you know, a lot of them are, you know, pretty much, you know, they have a little bit money saved, but because of all the other expenses, utilities and, you know, paying rent and whatever, you know, they only have X amount of dollars to deal with. And uh, so it, it's, it's really hard, I think, for for first time buyers. But, you know, are, you know, are there programs also that real estate agents can, you know, maybe help them with if they qualify for certain things? Is there programs out there to help first time buyers? There, um, we would be able to point you in the right direction of, of, like I had mentioned before, just um, financial coaches, right? Financial advisors and stuff like that. I mean, there's coaches for investing and then there is coaches for, well, there's life coaches for one. And then there's also just um, financial planners. And I think that's that's huge. I mean, it's, it's um, spend a little bit of money into learning how to do all this stuff. And it it's just, it's amazing. Um, often i mean we have had it where there's one percent down or rent to own options and stuff like that too uh typically i like to tell people that if we can avoid that it's it's much better if we can because then we can work towards your future a lot faster too right but right. sometimes that is an option too depending on you know if it's it also depends on if it's if it's a credit problem or if it's a money problem Right. If yeah. it's a money problem, then it's we just need to build up money. If it's a credit problem and you have the money, then I like a rent to own option, stuff like that. And like I said, there is options like that out there. There's not very many, but there is options and they're not typically cheap. So <laughs> um, all, all those all those things come into play. So 
programs maybe not specifically we might not have exact programs and stuff like that but i mean we do often we do have seminars and stuff like that for first time home buyers i mean uh i mean i mean talks with a couple other agents where we want to build uh, create a first time home buyers seminar and and stuff like that is just very it's very beneficial to go to because it also it allows you to learn who the local uh agents are it also allows you to learn who the local real estate lawyers are typically we'd have one of those there mm -hmm. that have like agents, lawyers, and mortgage brokers, like they have, they have the most um, insight into the market, right? And they all see different sides of it. Agents yeah. typically will see a little bit of everything, but a lot more about the negotiating side and all that stuff. Lawyers will see like, you know, a lot of the red flags that you need to watch out for when it comes to the legal, uh, I call it mumbo jumbo just because I don't understand it. <laughs> uh... And uh, mortgage brokers will always have the, 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 the financial aspect, right? They don't, they don't know exactly, you know, where your um, property taxes need to be at and all that good stuff in order for you to be able to afford this house over here. So, so if, if you find those seminars, I say, take them, go to them. Typically they're free. And if they're not, they're only a couple of dollars. So, right. and the information in there is amazing. Yeah. Is there, mm -hmm. is there that they should that first time buyers should be aware of because you know in 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 today's society even sometimes the people selling the houses could be a little crooked you know i've come across that in my own life you know you always have to be a little bit you know cautious but you know are there things that first time buyers should be on the look for you know and just you know make sure that they're aware so they're not oblivious to certain things Yes, I would say that, well, there's always something, right? Um, I mean, we have a lot of rural houses around here that have basements and stuff like that. They, and, you know, sometimes they leak and they have water in them. And, and we also want to know what the reason is. Like, is it a foundation problem? Is it like, what is the problem here? Um, and all those red flags, an agent would be able to point out. And that's always going to be, it's going to be different when it comes to houses. It's going to be different every market, right? Every, you know, Toronto is going to be different than, you know, we're in Manitoba. Yeah. So Manitoba is going to look a lot different than, the major major uh cities in bigger provinces but it's i don't know if there's just one tip like typical red flag but mm -hmm. uh there there will always be some red flags that the agent should be able to address and um point you in the right direction on how to deal with it or right. how to move on from it and that's that goes with home sellers as well right to home sellers sometimes they have red flags in their house too and my recommendation is just be clear with your agent about that right off the bat. Because the yeah. last thing you want is something like this to come and bite you in the butt later on in the future. If you sell a house and, you know, it's, it has a faulty well or something or just anything. Well, it's best if we just know about it and be upfront with it. And I mean, the price is obviously going to affect that, but it is what it is. So you can either fix it or sell it the way it is. So, right. No, that's a great point. Hmm. That's a good point. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today, what are some things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners, some really key points that you'd really like to, you know, get across? Um, well, the biggest thing I wanted to discuss today is it's still possible for a first-time home buyer to buy one a house. And I 100% agree. I think it, it is. Um, I think it is a lot harder today than it was five, 10 years ago. Um, but it is possible. Do the steps look a little different? In a way. Um, it, it always goes right back to budgeting. So I do think the first-time home buyer still has an amazing opportunity to own amazing real estate. Real estate is still going up. It just doesn't matter where you look at it. It's some way, shape, or form, it is going up. Um, yeah. Sometimes the plateau is for a little bit, but I mean, it, it's always on an upward trend, right? So the one piece I've, I would have to say to everybody is just don't lose hope in that. Find some people in your corner that can um, help you get to that point and right. that doesn't mean getting handouts that means you know working on getting amazing or better paying jobs it, it goes to you know and sometimes that might be all it is you might just need to find a new job that just really pays well and you right. might so yeah don't lose hope <laughs> don't lose <laughs> hope in the in that possibility so 
Yeah, no, I think I think eventually, you know, they, they, people sometimes they lose hope a little bit and they get disappointed. But, you know, you, you have to just keep looking. I always say if it's if, if you didn't get the house or someone outbid you or, you know, there's always there's a reason for it. It's just not meant to be. And just not to lose hope, like right. you said, and just keep looking and keep looking. And you'll you'll know when the right home is there. You know, something will just trigger you inside you and you'll know, yeah, this is the house that I want, you know. And you just, like you said, you just work with your real estate agent. I, I am all for having a real estate agent. I, I think that your best bet is to be with someone that understands the field, understands the industry, and that can really guide you because there's so much to intake when it comes to real estate. There's so much to learn. And, you know, if you're not familiar with a lot of the things, you really want someone there that could explain it to you and go through it with you. And we make something that is very complex very simple, you know, and that way it eases the stress and it takes a lot off your shoulders too. So I think what you're doing is great. I think, you know, I think this advice that you gave today was wonderful. I think it helped a lot of people. Now, what are some of the services that you provide that you can, you know, talk about and tell people about, you know, what you provide as a real estate agent? Yeah, absolutely. So one of them would be um, like if you own a home already, just to find out even the value of what your home is, uh, it's called a current market analysis or uh, a real estate portfolio review. Um, this is just it just tells you what the what your home is worth and uh, what it would be worth in the market today. Uh, sometimes people are just blown away by how much more their house is worth than they actually thought. So it's uh, quite uh, entertaining watching that sometimes. Um, <laughs> That and I'm always always open to sitting down with uh with uh, home buyers and stuff like who just want to know the process of what that looks like, right? I'll yeah. gladly take an hour out of my day and just have a sit down with you in a real heart to heart and see where you are where you are at. Uh, you might you might be a year away, you might be six months away, you might be ready to buy a house today and you don't actually know it. Um, we've definitely come across some of those or a couple of those a few times, and um, I'm. I'm the, I, I always, I always just want to be there for the people. Like when you're ready to make a move, come on down. We'll have a conversation. Uh, if you think you're ready, come on down. We'll have a conversation. A conversation doesn't hurt. And yeah. uh, the worst case scenario, you might make a friend out of the deal. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, other thing I would just uh, warn people on, maybe not warning, but uh, maybe a more of a precaution is when you have, a good chunk of money saved up and you're ready to go make, buy a house and you're hundred percent ready. You know, you can do it and all that stuff. And then the bank approval or the, the bank comes back and says, no, you can't buy a house. And it might be just because you just started your own business and it's going very well, but you don't have enough track record. Right. Don't lose focus on that buying a house process. Don't now go spend all this money that you had saved up that you worked so hard for and go yeah. buy toys. And mm -hmm. or buy that brand new truck or buy whatever. Just right. keep plugging forward. Because yes. if you keep growing this, you're just gonna have that much more for a down payment later. And that dream house that you had that you thought you had today might look a whole lot different in two years when you're ready to buy, when you have that track record that they need for um for the for your business. And your business might just do so much more better than you expected. So, yes. so that's true. That would be mm -hmm. I, I really like that. Absolutely. And where, where can people find you? They can find me on Facebook, uh, Joe Friesen uh, Realtor. Um, you can send me a friend request just on Facebook too, just at Joe Friesen. And uh, you'll you'll see my picture on my face. So you will never forget <laughs> it. And <laughs> on Instagram, you can also find me at Joe Friesen uh, underscore Realtor. And uh, I'm on YouTube. I'm on uh, LinkedIn. You can find me just about anywhere. So. <laughs> TikTok. Yeah. This has been awesome. I, I really thank you for coming on and just sharing all this information. I think it's so important. You know, you're you're located in Canada, but you know, a lot of the stuff you talked about today is so prevalent in 
any society, even our, our American society, you know, we, you know, so many first time buyers struggle and, you know, knowing this information and then they can even go on your website to get more information and to learn, you know, um, is very important. And then I'm sure they could, if they have questions and they just want to contact you just to ask you questions, they, they'd be able to, it doesn't matter where they're located. If they just need your help, they could reach out probably and, and get that help. Right. Correct. Absolutely. And I mean, I'm connected with agents all over the country, uh, including in the U.S. So if you would ever want to find an agent that just is even in New York, I mean, I can find one. I, I have a we have a we have a great group of people everywhere. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much Joe, for coming on the show today. This has been amazing. And I just, you know, want to thank you for all your knowledge that you've shared. And, you know, you're going to, you're definitely going to help a lot of people. Cause even when I did, you know, certain pieces on first time buying, you know, people just swarm to it because they just don't know what to do, you know? So the knowledge that you shared today was great. And I thank you very much for coming on the show and hope that, you know, you'll come back and we can talk some more. Absolutely. It was a really good chat with you. Yes. Have a great day. You as well. Bye-bye.